Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome to another Train Sim World video. This is going to be a good one. Today we're going to be hauling a lot, I mean a lot, of aviation fuel. And we're going to be hauling it through some very, very, very nice terrain. In a wonderful, sunny winter's day. It doesn't get any better than this. So first thing is, we've got to wait for the actual train to arrive. And I believe what's going to happen is... It's... They, they, they're then going to attach another loco on the back of it, which I think is that one over there, you see. It's just one coming in here. So there's going to be what they call a banker locomotive, which is that one. Which is going to pull up behind ours, and then we're going to attach it. Uh, because I think we're going to go up a steep gradient. You can see in the distance the, uh, the hills there, the mountains. We are on the main Spessart Barn DLC. So I think this is called the Ruhr Sieg Line. And it's a very popular line in the middle of Germany that has a lot of freight and a lot of passenger uh, cargo transportation on it. Here it comes. The actual loco we're using is the DBR 185.2. So it's a Deutsche Bahn Railways. Another very popular loco. Very, very versatile loco, actually. Gets used an awful lot in freight and cargo. Let's just go here and then game realizes we've done that. So yeah, you can get a feel for it. I think there's 20 plus tankers on board, fully loaded with aviation fuel, and each one weighs about 23.8 tons, I believe. So there's a heck of a lot of weight here. And we're going to drive it up a mountain <laughs> and then back down again. It's going to be a real job to manage the energy on this thing. In the climb, it won't be so bad, but in the descent, uh, the brakes are good on the DBRs, the, on the 185, they're very, very good brakes. But this thing, obviously the weight problem, uh, accelerating this is a real issue. So it's best to just keep momentum going if possible. I believe that's going to reposition itself now. I wait the attachments of the bank of locomotive, there's not a lot for us to do, I could climb up here. Get a bird's eye view, I guess. Oh, there he goes. Holy smoke. That thing took off like a Tesla. <laughs> so I think he's going to go down the track and then obviously reposition himself back onto this track. There's not a lot for us to do right now. We could actually watch him on here, couldn't we? Yeah, there he goes. So I'm guessing he's going to go... Maybe there, looks like. Yeah, there's the crossover track there. So while he's repositioning, let's have a quick jump down have a look at these cars uh so 22,550 kilos 28 point 23.8 tons maximum 2.7 percent gradient so i think we're going to be going up about a two percent gradient um as we go as we make our climb a lot of weight 20 plus cars 23 tons each lot of weight hence why we need an extra loco I think what will happen is when we get to the top of the climb, that's when we will lose the um, the banker locomotive off the back because we won't need him anymore. And then I presume for the, de the descent, we'll just go alone and he'll probably come back here. Would be my guess. Where is he? Yeah, he's on his route now. So this, uh, this locomotive is quite easy to drive. Um... Except, I mean, obviously it depends if you put C from PZB on. If you put C from PZB on, then it's a whole different ball game. But in terms of managing the locomotive itself, it's quite easy unless you get yourself into a situation where you speed through some track. Um, I better get down. At which point it has a tendency to kick in the, not so much the emergency braking, but it kind of goes into full lockdown. And you can't release the brakes and it will stop itself and then you have to kind of reset it and and get going again if i drive this thing properly we won't need to do that uh if it happens you'll see how we reset it because you can find yourself sitting there going why won't you move you know you put your throttle in and take your brakes off and nothing happens <laughs> and the train doesn't tell you why right let's wait for it to say i think we actually i think he'll probably couple that up we just get to stand here and watch. So 10.04 on a beautiful winter's day. This is going to be some amazing scenery, honestly. The scenery through this valley is, and mountain is, is wonderful. It just doesn't get any better. 
So it's going to be a lovely drive. Plan of more to leave locomotive. Okay. Did they tell you that you need to be fit to be a train driver? <laughs> There's an awful lot of running around involved in this freight stuff. I mean, I've got to run the entire length of the train. By the time I get there, I'll be passing out. Hey! Hope you're not hoping to board this train, because, uh... Uh-oh. Rip! Sick. I fell down the gap. Can you move it a bit? The problem with these people is they, they're completely... You can't move them in any way, so she stands there and I can't get past. They just knock you over. Look at that scenery. Even, like, bits of snow all over the cars. Like, nice little bits of detail going on. I like it. We'll get on board. I think the train's probably already set up, considering it's just come in, so we won't need to start it or anything. Blimey, it's a long run. Too much snow on those trees. Okay. Oh, hello. Wait, that's a very casual attire. It's like it you was... Do you mind if I open your window? It's a bit stuffy in here. Okay, right. Sit down. Uh, set the radio control system to on. Release the brakes depart ready. Okay, yeah, everything's been set up. So briefly, I'm going to turn the cab light off because it's too bright otherwise. We don't need it. Master instrument lights are on. The headlight signals are on normal. There's the brake and pressure release. This is the throttle lever. The brakes are over here. The AFB, if you want to use it, is down there. When you start this thing from cold, you need to worry about the pantograph raising and closing the main breaker circuit. And also, when you get in, you have to hold the battery button down for five seconds to start this thing. And that's the parking brake release. That's the parking brake set. So the parking brake's all released. Uh, the PISA B and C for all that, if you want to turn it on, it's all back there. But I'm not going to worry about that today. Uh, there is a blind if we need it. And we appear to be rolling. Did you not lift the brake on when you got out the seat? It's a bit sloppy, right? A bit dangerous, that. Okay, so we'll release the brake and we shall bring the bottle up to about 30%. Now, what we're looking for is tractive effort here. She's not happening right now. She's part of this, well, the wonder of this train. Release the brake. Bottle coming in. Oh, see, I think there's some weird system on this train where if you've got the brake on, okay, let me let me just reset the reversal switch. Put it back into forward. Release the brakes. Now the brakes are released, then we bring the power in. There you go, see? It's very, very picky about that. If you try to bring the throttle in before the brake is fully released, it doesn't let you. So anyway, 30% throttle is what you need just to get moving. There's an awful lot of weight here. And if we try to go full throttle, there's a couple of things going to happen. One, we're going to surge these power systems too many amps and two we're probably just going to wheel spin all day long so we need to get 30 percent just to get this rolling you can see the bottom right we've got a 0.3 percent gradient we can fully expect that to start climbing let's get a bit more power in now so you can see the actual power that we're applying here and the speed in kilometers over here this thing measures the amp amperes that are going through so you'll see that rise as we start to build up momentum. I assume it has energy reclamation, but I don't know. So when we apply the brakes, I assume it's going to get energy back, but I don't know enough about the, um, the 185. Right, 0 0.6, so it's, all, it's started to pick up already. We have a 120k speed limit coming up. I think we'll just take our time because we're about to join this track here, so we won't go too quickly. But yeah, you can expect some passenger trains on this line and lots of fantastic scenery. 1.1% gradient, this thing's building. Let's keep the momentum going.
Now, I don't know if you know much about the German signaling. Um, we're going to be using the, the helper at the top right anyway. So uh, we won't need to worry too much about the German signaling. Uh, but generally speaking, if it's if it's split into two lots of stuff, the one at the top is like, do this now, and the one below it is, this is what's coming, kind of thing. So on this simple signal here, two greens, you know, it's it's all go at the moment. I'll show you a more complex one later. Right, we've, we can open it up now. Don't expect any drastic acceleration out of this thing. We're on 2.1% grade, and that is close to the maximum that those... Those cars are rated at. Was it 2.3? I think it said. So it really helps having a second local at the back now. Um, not just to give you extra pushing power, but it also reduces the stress on the on the links between the, the cars. Because if you imagine, if you've got one local on the front of the whole train and it's pulling, all the tension is going through the connector links uh, on the log on the actual cars. If you've got one at the back, it's pushing. It kind of removes a lot of the tension between the cars. So it really helps this kind of front-to-back configuration. Now this DBR White 5 is part of a family of trains that they nickname Trax, T-R-A-X-X. -X. And Trax stands for, get this, Transnational Railway Applications with Extreme Flexibility. <laughs> I don't know how they can make this up. Like, they managed to use the letter X in an acronym that stands for Flexibility. <laughs> what it basically means is this thing goes about 160k maximum, uh, designed for medium freight, but also holds passengers over a varying terrain. It's a very flexible loco which is one of the reasons why I think it's so popular. Quite easy to drive and does a multitude of things. Very recognisable as well, aren't they? They're all the Deutsche Bahn stuff is just red. Very recognisable. Okay, so another simple signal there, two greens on the aspect. And if we have a look at the job list, as it were. So we've got a stop at the Heigenbrücken which is down here, 4.5 kilometers away. We'll have a look at that in a second on the map. Then we're going to be uncoupling some vehicles. Uh, the rear locomotive is going to come off, uh, because obviously that must be the top of climb, I guess. Then we're going to stop at the lower banoff, uncouple the rear five tanks, so obviously we're doing a drop, and then we're going to go and see the driver exchange who's going to carry on with the journey. Personally, I would like it if the scenario allowed you to automatically continue into the next scenario, that, which would allow you to do the rest of the journey. I think they should tend to do more of that. I think they should split their scenarios into multi-step, and then you can do each step, or you can do all the steps consecutively. So I can, if I want to, not finish here and carry on and do the rest of it. I think that would be a better way to go. Although maybe that second step takes takes you out of the the DLC route, so you can't actually drive it, kind of thing. Who knows? Anyway, let's have a quick look at the map. So we are here. We started back here somewhere. So we're going to be making this climb up here. I think there's a tunnel section there. Yep. And as we come out the tunnel, uh, we are going to be changing track, going into one of the loco freight sidings here because the two centre ones are probably the main straight through track then I think we're stopping there that's where we're going to uncouple the banksman and then we're going to carry on and then I think this is all the big descents I'm not sure where we're going I think our destination's here somewhere ultimately so it's quite a long drive but there are a few things that we need to watch out for okay so th this is the more complex one so that's now that's next is green, and next is a 70 kilometer uh, speed limit going to get applied. This is 7 is a 70, basically. So one of the distant signals is green, but it has a speed limit of 70. That would not surprise me if that was the section when you come out the tunnel and turn right, because that looked like quite a sharp bend to me. Or it could just be because you're passing through some station or something, I don't know. But we need to keep an eye on the speed and the gradient more particularly, because... Assuming this is the top of climb, 
our gradient's going to start dropping, and if we're not careful, our speed is going to pick up massively. But if you look at this, we're on max throttle now, 2% climb, and we're maxing out at 70 k's. We've got momentum, but we can't go any quicker, it seems. Yeah, so there you go. That's a green yellow. So the next one is a yellow aspect. So our descent, our climb is throt is leveling out. I'm going to drop the, uh, the power down. Right, so I'm going to drop it right down and just coast it. 1.5 k's away. I'm going to apply some brake and slow this down because I don't. We're on a level surface like already. Obviously we are, but the back of the train isn't. But even so, I don't want to be going this quick. That sharp turn. And a change of track makes me think we should be going slower, so... Let's get some braking on. That should do it. Right, release the brakes. The brakes take a bit of time to come back off, you see that? So, um, you need to allow for that. There, there, it's very easy to over-brake this thing. We're not against the timetable, so... We don't need to worry about getting the you know, on time, it's more important to obey this, yeah, look, 40 k's, I knew it, I knew it, let's get that speed up, down over the, there we go, and a double yellow, see that, so there's a yellow coming up, and then a red after it, that's what that was saying, okay, let's release the right there, nice, okay, look at this scenery though, how nice is this, couple of steps to break just to keep this under control and slowly decelerate. Now look at this, oh my life, what a beautiful place. Lovely. Right, let's release the brakes to see if we can just coast in now. Even on a level surface, something with this much mess will just roll for quite a long time. Yeah, there's the there's the over braking I told you about. <laughs> but I don't mind. I'd rather be I'd rather be safe than sorry kind of thing. I'd rather slow down a bit too much than not enough. Let's have a look at this while we're uh, cruising here. I can imagine this place in winter being dark, windy, covered in snow, and absolutely freezing cold and horrendous. But right now, this looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, so when we do go on our descent, we're basically going to be cruising without much throttle. If I probably no throttle, I imagine. Um, and that is just free energy at that point. Gravity is going to do all the work. Okay, it's got the braking. That should do it. As long as you stop before that red signal, it's absolutely fine. Okay, first bit's done. It looks like we're going downhill already. It says 0%. Head back and uncouple the banker loco from the train. Alright, you stay here, and I'll go outside and do the work, okay? You're still being paid, no doubt. Oh, 300 and... I tell you, I've got to run all the way down there, and then all the way back again. I don't know why the guy at the back couldn't just uncouple himself. Why do I have to run all the way down here? You can't even jump in this thing. Wait, I've not actually been up here. Oh, look at the invisible wall. You will not explore the scenery. It's a bit floaty. You feel out of breath.
50, 40, 30, 20. Retard, retard. Sorry, Devil. Right. Actually, it was Boeing. Um. Okay. Oh, there's no driver in there. Okay, that's why we had to do it. I, I incorrectly assumed that somebody would be sat in that locomotive because I'm sure somebody needs to move that now. I thought it would be driven back. That's why we had to do it. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh no, I've only got 16 kilometers to run. Hang on. Okay, we'll carry on. Nice cars though, aren't they? Really detailed. Really, really detailed. I would love to see what third party devs can do with this. I mean, if, if Dovetail can do that, third parties will just run with it. I reckon when we do get third party locos, they're going to have a lot of system support on board as well. Some really nice system technology going on. Okay. I'm back. How are you? Stop at the low ban off. Right, let's see if we can get this right. Let's release the brakes. And we're going to give it time, that needle, to get fully onto zero. And then we're going to bring in the throttle. There we go. So I think the trick is when you release the brakes, if you notice, it's on like a negative here, and then that needle comes to zero. And when it's on zero, that's apparently when you can put the throttle on. Now, we've only got one loco now, so we may need a bit more than 30% to get this moving. We'll see. You can hear the power building. turning they are I think aren't they there we go yeah we just need a bit more juice I can see the wheels are starting to move but look at that we're going to put in 60% power now just to even haul this on a flat surface there's no way it would have moved this up that hill let's get a little bit of speed going oh that's a lot of cars the German manufacturers have been busy Tell you what, there's a lot of traffic on the road. Okay, Max Throttle to get us going. Just gonna watch the um, incline because I reckon that to me visually looks like a downhill segment. I'm guessing it's 40 on the track change. got to bear in mind is that we've just changed track but behind us is over 400 meters of cars that are now changing track like we've got to basically keep under the speed limit until the rest of the train has gone through i'm just gonna haul it back a bit here maybe just coast it actually let's just coast it through the that one. Let's have a look at the scenery. Look at that. Not like you, but outside my house right now, it's blue skies and sunshine. A bit like this, but there's no snow on the ground. It's like, what is it? 16 Celsius outside. I've got a little thermometer thing on my desk. And, um, it's quite cheap, actually. It's called, it's called a Thermpro or a Thermopro. Uh, it's about 15 quid on Amazon. And you get a little sensor that you just put outside. So I've got that outside. And then on the screen it shows you what the temperature and humidity is, both in your room and outside. Which is kind of cool. If you like that kind of thing. I actually got it during the um, Amazon Christmas sale, I think it was. like Oh no, the Black Friday, that was it. I got it during Black Friday week was on quite a discount and I looked at her and I thought 15 quid for that yeah I love that <laughs> I 
Right, so what are we doing? Um, we are on 0.7% gradient, so what we're going to do, we've got a speed limit of 120 at the moment, 130 coming up. We're going to get up to about 100 and probably about 115-ish, and then we're just going to coast. We may need to apply some light braking just to keep it under, under check, but once we're up to speed we'll be fine. Yeah, I was right. That is the destination. But the, the track actually carries on. I think this bit here, this red bit, you see how this is, um, this bit's in white. I think there's differing segments of um, signaling. I think this particular line has two kinds of signaling. I think, I think don't get me, don't quote me, one might be German, one's Austrian, something like that. So it's two different styles of um, signaling. So those poor train drivers who drive this line have to know both kinds of signaling. I mean, I'm sure it becomes second nature, but when you first look at it, you're like, what? Why does it have to be so complicated? And then you look at French signaling and you think, yeah, no. <laughs> I am not driving a French train. Okay, I think 110, that's enough. I'll do Put that on to uh, off now, just coast. Very common on, on trains like this to just coast it. There's no point using energy when gravity will do it all for you anyway. Oh look. Passenger car. I've been on one of those. They're double decker, they're really cool. I see our speed already is starting to um, accelerate towards the speed limit. We've got 120 limit coming, so I'm just going to apply some brake to keep it under control. Looking at that trend line above our speed bar, trying to keep that in the middle, really. But it's not going to. It's not going to work. The, uh, the gradient just dropped from 0.7 to 0.2, so. How are you doing? You gonna make a brew? What, you're cold? No, I'm not closing the windows. No way. I like the fresh air. But you could do that if you want to blind a little bit like that, say. Or you could say... You could do that and say, ha ha! <laughs> oh boy. Just block out the safety driver's point of view. Let's see if we can spot some signaling uh, to show you something more interesting. They're just effectively like repeater type things. Okay, let's bring our speed underneath the limits a bit more. I don't like running so close. Apparently the, the real drivers, um, the ones who use the, who use the PZB system, tend to keep it five kilometers under whatever the speed limit is, just to allow for you know, measurements and accuracies on speed. Because once the PZB kicks in, it's just a pain. So they'd rather run 5Ks under and not have it kick in. Which, personally, I don't blame them. But yeah, we're just going to keep our eye on the signals and see what they're doing. And also the gradient. Like, it can catch you out the gradient in particular, because already, if you see... It went from 0.3 to 0.5, and that just, you know, if you're driving this for real, you might start to feel it, I don't know. You might feel the extra gravity, maybe. But certainly when you're in this, you can't feel it, you just have to monitor the speed. Let's release that. So even then, I just, I just quickly went to external camera, and it... And we just went slightly with intolerance, but ever so slightly over the limit. There we go. Oh yeah, look at these valleys. Fantastic.
I can imagine being a train driver on days like like this, on a on a route like this, and you just think, this is why I did this. <laughs> this is why I became a train driver. For days like this. Right, so if you look at the gradient now, it's on a 1% drop, so our speed's going to pick up fairly quickly here. But all the time, no throttle. Okay, so we'll start getting some very light braking on. Just in case there's some kind of signaling change. At the moment, we've got a 2k run before the next signal block. in the back of that, the aviation fuel. Imagine how much money that is behind us. 22,000 something kilograms. I presume that was the content. Times the number of cars. Times what it's worth per kilo. Crazy. detail in these sceneries. Another passenger car. I'm going to get the speed. If you're noticing 3Ks, we're going to have to drop down to 100. At the moment, we can just coast this. Wow, imagine like living up there. Just the view looking down must be fantastic. You open your bedroom window just seeing that drop. You alright? Yeah, she's talking to me after I messed about with the blind. <laughs> right, starting to get some break. We need to get our speed down to 100 now within a kilometer. Perfectly doable. And then 4.3k to the destination. Let's have a look what the next thing was. We need to stop and then we're going to take the five tankers off the back. Okay. Gradient's also decreasing. Right, we're underneath 100, so we'll just bring the braking back slightly. That'll do. shave any more off and this is what it is we're driving these things it's just energy management obviously paying attention to the signals and obeying the the laws of the line as it were but a lot of it is down to energy management on the actual train Let's have a quick look at this. Now, this looks like quite a busy station. I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna be changing track here. So well before then, I want to be down to like 50 on that. As we're turning left, I want to get the speed down to about 50, I think. In anticipation of a track change and a full stop. So good. Yeah, it doesn't have energy reclamation. I've just noticed this. You see how it's in the yellow negative? It says minus 35 amps. It's actually reclaiming the energy coming downhill. That's so cool. Right, 
believe this is the left turn. Yeah. So I'm just going to start applying the brake now and um, get this under control. Still quite a steep drop. We're getting no information about a speed drop at the moment, if you notice. <clears throat> it just says 150 k's in 2.7, but because we're going to have to do a track change, you know that that's not true. Okay, that's enough. Right, so there you go. That's a green and a red aspect next. So the, the next one is a red stop. Also, the top one says 100k track limit currently on this section. It doesn't tell us what the next section is, speed limit wise. But yeah, I feel comfortable doing 45 through here. I think I'm just going to bring it down as such. There you go. There's the track change. There's no way you want to be smashing through here at like 100 k's. Overbrakes it again. Definitely takes a bit of practice and experience to get that right. As the speed comes down, it, it starts to accelerate the speed coming down. And it catches you out a lot. off and cruise to victory. Lower than off, this is our destination. I think we've got to detach five cars now and then check in with some driver some more. That's a nice little run. Really enjoyed that. Lovely scenery. Okay, you can stop anytime you want. Stop? Now? Oh my god, if we smash that red light. <laughs> Yikes, I didn't want to stop. <laughs> I had visions of smacking that red light and failing the whole thing. Right, set the reverser to neutral. Parking brake is going on. Some of the shipments is, is destined for local industry. Head back and couple the rear five tankers. Right, I might not see you again, so uh, nice chatting with you. Enjoy the rest of your journey and have a nice day. Miserable woman. I need to put Fitbit on these train drivers. See how many steps a day they're doing doing this. I need to change the audio on the running sound. It sounds so weird. It doesn't sound like snow, does it? It sounds like a bird skipping across the ice. Right, there's the one. Uncouple those five. Exchange with the onward driver. Um, okay. I'm going to go this way. Looks safe. Don't mind me. I'm allowed to do this. And there's a problem. How do we get on the platform? Um, you can't climb or jump in this game. Can we get up here? There we go. 
Yay! Um, that's a bit of a group hug thing going on there. <laughs> we'll not talk about that. <laughs> I've not seen you for ages. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. We uh, 4,260. We kept below the um, speed limits. Just a tiny, tiny cross over here and here, but well within tolerance. Got a bunch of points. So that was, in case you're looking for this, go back to the main menu and you can see which scenario that was. So that's the main Space Art Barn is the DLC, and it was that one, the fuel exchange one that we just gold medaled. Take part in a huge shipment of aviation fuel heading east. So that was the, the line we did, the BR185.2. That's been Train Sim World. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Take care, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Happy training.